we've kind of touted this album as the, the funeral for the American dream. I'm here with the wonderful Shane McCarthy of Wayfarer. How are you, my friend? Uh, I'm doing great, man. Just uh, here in the middle of a work day at the brewery, but it's good to be talking with you. Yeah, man, it's 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 nice to see you too. It's it's been a minute since we saw each other at your show at the Black Heart. Yeah, for sure. That was good to hang out in person. Good time in London, man. Awesome, man. Well, obviously, there's a lot of exciting things happening in the form of American Gothic, which is coming out very, very soon. Um, so, obviously, we're here to talk about that that record. What was the the writing process like for that record? Uh, sometime around. I'd say like summer or so last year, um, enough ideas have materialized. We're always kind of like a big picture first, like concept first, and then kind of build it all from there. So we started kind of talking about what, what we wanted to do with the next one and what it would feel like it'd be about and um, dissect it somewhere away from the rehearsal space. Because when you're playing in the rehearsal space, you know, you kind of have like your... Um, your isms that you that you fall into, you know, and that's that's good. That's what makes you you. But um, it's also good to like step away from that sometime and look at the song from a wider perspective. So I think there was a bit more of that this time. And with it being our fifth album and, and everything going into it, we just, you know, knew we wanted to go for something really specific and go pretty big and pretty all the way on it. And uh, I think we did. So it was good. Does what's what's the the themes of American Gothic? Because it sounds like everything is all part of one cohesive um, idea, you know, with each different record. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, it's all still from the lens of like the American West, kind of as the aesthetic and as the perspective and as like the world it lives in. But um, whereas the last album was specifically about the West, like as an idea, this one kind of zooms out the lens a little further to be about the, the nation as a whole. And it's also picking up where Romance of Violence left off in terms of concepts where that album at the end is, you know, after after the whole um, the whole myth, the whole legend, the whole show of the American West is like been deconstructed. It's like asking where is where is the dream? Where is it gone? And so this album kind of picks up from there where from the jump, like the dream is dead and maybe it never existed in the first place. So we've kind of touted this album as the, the funeral for the American dream in terms of its world it kind of moves the clock forward a bit to be a little bit more like um post turn of the century you know early 20th century where you have the westward expansion is basically complete you have kind of um the nation somewhat established coast to coast and you have these bigger money interests like bigger money powers like the railroads and the oil barons and all that kind of starting to take hold and that's um that's kind of the world of this record so what, what kind of level does history play into Wayfarer's sort of ideas? Because it sounds like you you definitely know your stuff, man, when it, when it comes to the Western history. Uh, yeah, I mean, we definitely do a lot of research for the band. Um, like two, two of the other guys, Isaac and James, are like, uh, they both have history degrees. You know, they're, they're long, long studied in a lot of world history in general, and then definitely um, American history. And this record, I'd say more so than like the last one where um, for example, there is a song that for the first time um, in our history, we did write specifically about one historical event, like the whole song is lyrically about that. That's the second track, Cattle Thief, is about um, the Johnson County War in Wyoming, uh, which is like just before the turn of the century, uh, kind of like basically class warfare um, uh, involving, you know, these this kind of bigger money, larger power behind them group of um, stock growers, cattle barons, and um, these younger, mostly immigrant people trying to make a life for themselves and them being framed up and eventually hanged by by the cattle barons, um, accusing them of stealing cattle. And then it kind of devolving into a whole conflict where mercenaries were brought in and, and there was like basically an actual actual war um on on county soil um so that was yeah like an example of you know with this album being again kind of about the dark soul of the nation it was like more important to dive into some actual historical like reap around the oil fields does circle around this whole kind of larger power oil industry um you know entity and and kind of the idea of an eventual reckoning for what what they've committed and how they've 
um, chase their fortune. Um, but it's it's kind of told through a kind of allegorical way a lot of the time. But that's, I guess, the greatest thing, you know, about having a a concept which is as sort of wide open as the American Western. Like, you can kind of tackle it in so many different ways, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's all open for history in general is open for interpretation and then definitely something as open-ended as like the American West. Like it's, you know, I'm, I'm living in the American West right now. Um, and a lot of, when you think about the American West, you think about a specific time period, but it's still a place. And in, in the grand scheme of the world, like, you know, you're, you're there in England, which has been around and been a nation for a lot longer than you, the United States. So it's like really interesting just how much is packed into a relatively young history here. Yeah, man, absolutely. And, you know, like you said, I think you touched on this briefly about, you know, the the sort of industrialization and having, you know, main um, train lines and things like that. Obviously, that was a massive thing for here in England, but I'm sure it was enormous for, you know, a, a place the size of the US to have that, you know, really brought a huge kind of influx of, you know, new life, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, again, there, there's there's a bit of a progression album to album. It's definitely not like, it's not like it's one story, you know, and they're like directly connected. But um, the last album, there is a lot of themes about the railroad and like the Iron Horse, you know, is, is, uh, is what it's personified as. Um, and it's in that album, it's kind of depicted as this like harbinger of all of the, you know, the violence and chaos that comes with the uh, westward expansion. One of the other questions I wanted to ask was about 1934. What, because that's kind of a small interlude on the album, but what, um, what does that sort of represent? Why, why did you choose that as, as you know, the, the, the time? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, we wanted to be kind of big with that song title because it is, it is just a, an instrumental piece that's, that kind of bridges one thought to the next on the album. But uh, there, there is one of the recurring themes through American Gothic is about the uh, Dust Bowl in, in the American West and Midwest, um, which was, you know, a, a couple year period in the early 1930s, but a lot of the major dust storms that caused the most uh, kind of damage and change um, were in 1934. And and how the album uses uses the, the Dust Bowl and those kind of weather events that were, you know, destructive enough to people's way of life especially this is a lot of like poorer people settling you know kind of planes and and lands just like trying to trying to chase that american dream and build this life for themselves not having too much and you know so much of agriculture was um destroyed so many lives were actually lost and and it just kind of was such a um an earth-shaking event for that that part of the country and um the album kind of uses the Dust Bowl as like a metaphor for, you know, some kind of reckoning, like paying for the sins of the nation that, that has, has so much darkness in its heart and blood on its hands. Um, And there's kind of like a lot of hints towards like, you know, the storms that are coming. And so 1934 kind of, kind of circles around that atmosphere. And there is a sound sample that's taken from an interview of a, of a survivor. Um, You know, it's pretty obscured. You can't totally hear everything there, but there's, there's just a couple like poignant things that, seep through from that account of it it's it's awesome man you know like because it's you know for for lack of a better word you know it's it's so much more than just like red dead redemption meets black metal like there's so much underneath in all of these different layers that you that you're exploring with american gothic it's really really interesting well good i mean that's the hope you know like uh we we love the aesthetic of western films and whatnot but but yeah, it's always been really important to us to not just, it, you know, it's very, it's just very easy to slip into gimmick if you're matching these two things together, um, you know, and 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 it really just depends on how you do it, like how you do it conceptually, and you know, that there's there's space for all these different approaches to exist. Um, like it's not to say there's only one right way to do it, but this is the only way that appeals to us. You know, we're we're just not the type to want to be a gimmicky theatrical band in that way it's where we're from that's the most important part and so this you know much like your scandinavian folk metal and black metal draw from the 
music and the history and the mythology of where they're from. We're doing the same thing for here. And for us, it's all like influence of Denver Sound bands, you know, 16 Horsepower, Slim Cessna's Auto Club, um, all the Monthly Monthly bands. Um, and then, yeah, the history, the lore, the interpretation that has built this kind of legend around the American West has always been just enticing for us to explore. When it comes to the sound, that's really important that it's always, everything's coming from the same place all the time. Like the metal parts should be just as influenced by the same aspects of Americana and, um, you know, this Western kind of got the country feeling as the cleaner parts um, and vice versa. Like the cleaner parts are still drawing from the darker, darker bits as well. Um, so it's, you know, we want it to be seamless and one thing and not switching back and forth, mashing two things together. Yeah, absolutely, man. I was going to say, actually, in terms of the guitar and, and things like that, like, because there's a lot of like um, hammer-ons and pull-offs and slides and things like that. Did you kind of actively, well, it sounds, from the sounds of it, it sounds like you did actually think about that and think, okay, is this kind of like ideas that were adopted from like country guitar players and then you've put it into sort of like more of a metal thing. Is that right? Um, yeah, definitely. I think, you know, our our gateway into all this stuff is the the Colorado bands that that started to make that kind of, you know, gothic country dark americana whatever people like to refer to it as and that i think that was kind of the eye-opening thing for us getting into music being younger when these bands existed because there, there's there's just some kind of inherent somber darkness to it that you know when you when you think just country music certain things come to mind that probably don't necessarily bring that bring that to mind right away but they they were doing it in a way that that showed that you could make this really moody um you know dark atmospheric sort of approach to something in the world of western music and it's been cool like joey the other guitar player he's really kind of taken up with the uh the slide guitar like i do a little bit of it on the album but most of it is is his playing and i feel like he's really found a, a distinctive way that i i can't think of any other metal player that you know incorporates it in such a purposeful way that shapes the sound so much um yeah. And yeah, like stuff like that is important to us, you know. And at this point, it's just like it's it's who we are. Like we don't go in trying now to be like, oh, let's really try to master this. It's like we've been exploring that and working in that realm for so long that like when we sit down to write, that's that's what comes out. And um, I think that's how it should be. You know, we've we've fully kind of um, fleshed out a, a musical vocabulary. Not to say we can't ever add more to it, but we've definitely built built a uh, a world that we like to work in yeah absolutely man and going back to your, your point previously like i think it's really interesting that because i didn't kind of pick up on this but you're right like there is the sense of like folklore around the americana and i feel like not many bands really explore that sort of thing really from the u.s you know it's like it's the same thing that all that uh for example, again, that kind of like Scandinavian, you know, Nordic, like Viking culture stuff is so much more interesting to people here because it's more exotic, um, you know, and more just like so far away from their world that it's like more fascinating and be like, oh, I want to dive into that. And so I think for a lot of people growing up here, you know, learning American history and about the American West is like not that interesting. Like I know even myself when I was young, you know, it's just like things you learn about in school that are not inherently that interesting. You'd rather learn about, you know, the Crusades or like, um, yeah, like the Viking raids or something like that. But I don't know. The older you get, and the more you like pay attention to your surroundings, um, at least in, in our experience, you know, the more kind of like there is questions of what makes it what it is and wanting to learn more about it. Absolutely, man. And I think you're right, you know, because I'm I'm from the UK. I'm like, whoa, this this like Western thing's so so interesting. And there's there is that romance with it as well, you know. I think it's it's interesting though, because you mentioned Colorado and it almost feels like Colorado is almost like another member of the band, if the, if that makes sense, without sounding too kind of pretentious. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, but I mean I, I get what you're saying. Like it's also rooted in um where we're from. Like Colorado is our lens into the American West and it is it is a very unique place just in that 
landscape wise, you know, you have half the state is like large, impressive mountains and half the state is very dry, high desert plains. You kind of have the convergence of both and the, the cultural aspects of both um, coming together here as well as, you know, where it sits kind of smack in the middle of the country and where what historically has kind of come through here or transpired here. Um, that, yeah, I think that was the inspiration from the start, you know, back in the earliest days of the band, like before we really dove into like the, the old West sort of topics, um, it was still about Colorado and, you know, about like the mountains or, or what have you. So it's, it's always been, yeah, just kind of a, a place of inspiration, I guess, more than anything. Yeah, man, absolutely. And um, so in, in terms of like, um, you know, combining the idea of basically like black metal with country music. Like, how did you guys come up with that idea? What was what was that sort of? Was it kind of just like an organic thing that you just sort of started playing? Yeah, well? yeah. Again, I think it comes from like those those older Denver Sound bands um, that I mentioned before. Any of the David Eugene Edwards bands, Slim Cessna bands, Monthly Monthly, all those guys. Um, that 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 stuff has just uh, always been kind of like a still a, a niche and underground thing here but like an important thing here and something that i latched onto at an early age and, and some of the other members of the band did as well and when we started the band we were pretty young and i think it was more you know we were already into that stuff but it was kind of more about like okay we're, we're we want to make a, a metal band a, a kind of black metal band and like so you know the, these are the bands we're going to draw from more like the, the metal side of things and then over time just the interest interest and influence of that stuff just kind of started to creep in organically and i think at some point you know we just like noticed that that was happening and decided to you know well maybe at, at in the early stages we'd have been like no we can't do that you know we're like a metal band we can't can't do these sorts of things and eventually noticed that that influence was coming in anyway and it's like well let's just embrace it and like really see how far that goes yeah man and you know like we said before like the you're kind of your canvas is very, very open to wherever you want to go. You know, you could include like some Nick Cave style stuff. Like, <clears throat> sorry, I thought that High Plains Eulogy actually made me think of like Nick Cave, that kind of vibe. Awesome. Yeah, I, I love that stuff. And yeah, I mean, there, there are a lot of different approaches like that, that, um, that yeah, that uh, we, we definitely look up to and draw inspiration from. Uh, I mean, another one, big one for us is Fields of the Nephilim. You know, they were like, the first band that I can think of, which is funny because they're from they're from the UK, um, but to really infuse like the Western approach, which I think for them was really directly inspired by film more than anything, um, into like dark music. You know, for them it was more the kind of like atmospheric post punk sort of stuff. Do you do you ever you know like when you're actually coming up with the songs and uh, the ideas, like do you have a sort of almost like a cinematic thing that you follow like in your head imagining what what this sort of uh like environment would look like or what the people would you know be dressed like or do you know what i mean to a point yeah i think a lot of that is built directly just from watching so many so many movies so many takes on it like that's that is a huge influence for the band like the last last record it was a lot of the like italian westerns you know the kind of um hyper hyper realistic like Oh, like uh you know larger than life um sort of uh gory stylistic movies and this one given the kind of subject matter drew from more like the late 60s early 70s american westerns which were more pensive and deconstructive and generally kind of darker and sadder and less the black and white morality tales that you might get from like a john wayne movie or something there was a several month period where that's all i watched was like american westerns from that time while we were working on the record and we would get together with the other guys in the band and watch some of it sometimes as well and like talk about these things in relation to the music we're making um so i think because of that a lot of imagery is planted in our heads you know and when we're like approaching these songs it'll kind of be based off of some of that and then then yeah it is it is all kind of definitely a lot of visual thinking world building sort of stuff from there you know if you could kind of um time travel for the lack of a better word what period of you know western sort of american western would you go back to is there a particular time that you're especially enamored in or 
I don't know. I mean, you know, I guess the, the bigger question is, would that be like a fly on the wall situation or would you actually be thrust into it? Because realistically, I don't want to be thrust into any of it. You know, <laughs> it's like I, I, I would not be able to probably survive in, in, in a world like that, given the, you know, comforts of the modern world that we've grown used to. But in terms of, you know, being able to go back and observe, there's, I don't know, there's all sorts of stuff that would be kind of fascinating. And, and yeah, I would, I would absolutely jump at that chance just because so much is colored by, you know, fiction and the way things are represented that you do want to know. It's like, okay, what, what is it actually like though for these day-to-day people who, you know, enough of them were able to survive to carry families forward and stuff. And like, how, how, how did that, that look for them and how how is that actually different from all these kind of you know flowered up accounts um that would be really fascinating i, I don't I, in terms of one specific place and time period i don't even think i can name one yeah for sure man i mean what well, um when it comes to um the production as well i feel like this is a real kind of step up in in terms of production who who was it that you that you worked with was it arthur risk is that right it is arthur Rizk. yeah 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 he was awesome man like it he we owe a lot to him for sure for, for how the record turned out. Um, we were looking for something going in where, you know, we felt like we've been, we've been building, building our sound for a long time. We know what we're going for at this point. We know what we were going for with the album and that we wanted to, you know, do it, do it right as do it as well as we possibly could. And so we were like trying to find the person who was the most at the top of their game right now from a, a engineering mixing producer side of things. And um, Arthur was kind of just the name that kept coming up when we would discuss it because he does so many different sorts of things. You know, he plays in uh, Eternal Champion and Summerlands and like these heavy metal bands that are, I think like the, the, the cream of the crop of that sort of thing now. So he is a musician, he plays in a band, he understands that dynamic of things. And then he records and works with bands, you know, ranging from uh, like, more semi pseudo mainstream like code orange ghost main all the way to like really messy brutal death metal um and all of them he does really strongly you know all, all these these uh, productions come up really really strong and really you know pushing pushing the elements of the band to the forefront and um yeah i think it's it's just rare to find a producer who cares and is is on top of things um but is also not trying to like force anything in a direction, you know, not trying to make it their sound in one way or another and just enhance and elevate whatever the band is trying to do. Definitely like when it came to a lot of the clean singing parts and stuff that was tracked even in a whole separate session with Arthur. And um, I think he, you know, had a lot to contribute to that and a lot of how the record ended up. Um, yeah. would just would not have turned out the same and to the same quality. Had we gone it gone, gone and done it with anyone else. Oh, okay. So he actually like, you know, suggested different ideas, different techniques that you guys could use and things like that. Yeah, for sure. No, yeah, like I said, we, we kind of left some things open for for that. Um we like A, we like to do with, with one another in the studio, you know, leave certain things kind of for, you know, just the, the spur of the moment thing. Cause sometimes that's where the best best stuff comes out. And, and you know, we we typically plan things out pretty pretty thoroughly, but we've kind of learn to to leave a little bit up to chance for that reason yeah it was great to have somebody that you know didn't feel like you just had somebody there to to capture it all on a hard drive you had somebody there who was like working on it with you and also you know also thinking about how do we make this the best it can be um and it was yeah it was hugely important to the right mm-hmm. and if you if you had to sort of like you know i know this is like the like choosing your favorite child basically but if you had to kind of choose a a favorite song from the record would you have one in particular or is there a reason that you might have one or i don't know i think it's a little early to say you know i think we're still kind of processing the record like you know we focus focus on it really big for a long time but it's only finally finished writing even really by the end of recording because there was that last little bit that happens in the studio and then I think most of us typically like to kind of take time away from it after a while, just because you did spend so much energy and, and kind of investment into it. Obviously we're the type to like approach albums as albums approach them as a whole thing. Like the songs are all a piece of a greater whole a couple different parts for different reasons stand out. Like the, the last track is the, the reason we chose it for a single is because it like 
I don't know. It, it fleshes out elements that we've always kind of messed around with before, but it like kind of commits to them more fully and um, therefore was like uh, a, a great growing experience as a band to write the song. And it, it felt like by the, by the end of it, it was kind of something else that we hadn't done that was like, you know, maybe an important important aspect of, of the band. And um, I think that's why we chose it as a single, also with it being the last song on the record, you know, in the age of um, short attention spans and whatnot. A lot of times those just don't don't get as much play just purely by being at the end of a track list. And um, since we're the type of people to think so heavily about the album as a whole, the last song is typically really important to that. And so we wanted to make sure that it was heard. And that's why we put it out as the first single. So that that one for me, as well as um, from a more pers- metal perspective, um, the Kettle Thief is one that like um, just happened really naturally there was a lot of us playing together and like bouncing ideas off each other where you know i think it's some of the most like heavy metal shit we've done while also still being this like very dark um focused americana thing it's like it's 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 a river you know and so therefore that's like fun to play as as a metal band cool and um finally what would you say you've learned about yourself in you know creating american gothic Hmm. That's that's a good question. Um, I don't know. It's it's nice with this band to be in a place that you know we feel like we really know each other musically and and personally, obviously, um, and we know you know what what this iteration of what we do um, is is kind of meant for. And so I don't know. I don't know if I can draw any huge conclusions personally about myself, but I know that as a band and therefore as a player in the band, you know, we've gotten to a place of, of confidence of just, you know, knowing, knowing who we are and what, what we're trying to do. And uh, that makes it, uh, I don't know if easier is the word, but just more, you know, more assured when we go in to do something and more kind of intentional about everything. Yeah. To be at the point where we feel like we can make something that, you know, however it's received in the world, like whatever it, happens when the album comes out like we feel like we made the album that we needed to make you know and that's that's important absolutely man and i think you know you've made a, a stone cold classic album of the year contender it's absolutely brilliant man thank you i, I appreciate that like i said i'm really curious to see how it's taken because um you know it is we've just been going deeper and deeper down our own rabbit hole at this point and we feel like for that rabbit hole this is you know this is a pretty fully realized um, release, uh, a fully realized kind of version of that. But um, yeah, I'm curious to see what people think, and I'm really glad because I know you. I know you've paid attention over the last few years, and you know the last few records. So I'm really glad that as somebody who who likes the band and like what we're doing, that you know this one is is landing for you. That's that's awesome to hear because it's um, you know that's that's what we hope that, that anybody who digs this sort of thing that that would uh would feel this one because we put a lot into it so thank you no worries man well it's been a pleasure to have a chat with you man i, I really appreciate you taking the time to, to have a chat yeah no same it's, a, it's good catching up and i always appreciate uh the the real conversation you know it's good yeah